Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for invitation. It's a great pleasure for me to present you the recent results of my research group working on developing new optoelectronic and photovoltaic devices with added functionalities. So first of all, I will overview my background and expertise uh, and then focus on two research projects, uh, high performance and radiation resistant photodiodes and device physics of semi-transparent organic solar cells. I'm presenting currently from Astana, it's new capital of Kazakhstan, uh, a country in uh, Central Asia and uh, the largest landlocked country in the world. Astana is known for being the second coldest capital in the world. So I know that winters in Harrisburg are quite cold, but uh, believe me, I got quite good training to survive cold winters uh, in Astana. Um, regardless of very cold climate, Astana is a brand new city with world-class new uh, architecture and infrastructure. So obviously for a new world-class capital, it's necessary new world-class university. And uh, Nazarbayev University was established in Astana um, 12 years ago as the top international research university in Central Asia. Now we have over 600 professors from 55 countries, mostly from North America, uh, Western Europe and Australia. And uh, our university is governed by very um, experienced and uh, uh, highly professional top managers. Our president, Shigeo Katsu, a former vice president of the Europe and Central Asia region World Bank, and our provost, Elisamni Adesida, former uh, provost of University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign and president of uh, IEE Electron Device uh, Society, um, known expert in material science and optoelectronics. I joined Nazarbayev University in 2020, and uh, uh, my responsibilities as assistant professor of physics department um, are structured in the following way. So the most important part is research, where I established my uh, research group and uh, device fabrication characterization labs. I secure uh, funding for realizing my research ideas um, and make sure that all group members um, do the work according to plan and uh, within the budget. So another important part of my activities at Nazarbayev University is teaching. I'm teaching general physics to uh, large classes with more than 100 students. And also um, I developed a new course, Introduction to Optoelectronics with Laboratory Works um, for, uh, for graduate students. Um, also important part of teaching is supervising PhD and master students. And um, one more responsibility that is service to the uh, university and uh, the department. Um, I represent physics department as elected member uh, for um, faculty uh, senate of Nazarbayev University, uh, actively participate in um, committees for hiring new faculty members and laboratory assistant, um, and also admission committees for PhD and um, master students uh, also participate in uh, outreach programs of Nazarbayev University to promote the university and physics department. At my early stage at Nazarbayev University, I put a lot of efforts to build state-of-the-art device fabrication and characterization labs from scratch. Initially, I had only uh, walls and uh, uh, now this work is done, so my lab uh, is uh, my my labs are pretty much uh, fully uh, established and are operating now. Um, so this is a small part of a bigger research collaborative cluster at Nazarbayev University. We actively 
um, use shared uh, core facilities at Nazarbayev University with state-of-the-art device, um, uh, thin film deposition and uh, materials characterization facility. Uh, also, we have on campus a large facility uh, proton and electron pulse accelerator, which is really important for uh, my collaborative research project focused on developing uh, radiation resistant semiconductor devices. Um, and also with the help of Provost, we are Minister of Education and Research of Kazakhstan. Um, I negotiated quite good conditions for access to beam time at the two mega electron volt uh, proton accelerator operated as the Institute of Nuclear Energy, Almaty, Kazakhstan. Almaty is the former capital of Kazakhstan and currently the largest city in this country. <clears throat> uh, also, after several meetings and discussions, I convinced Professor George Mood, Nobel Laureate in Physics, um, to join my collaborative research project as a co-PI with his team from Energetic Cosmos Laboratory, which he established at Nazarbayev University, um, and uh, uh, together put efforts in developing novel uh, optoelectronic and photovoltaic devices for space applications. So with such nice um, research infrastructure and outstanding interdisciplinary collaborators, uh, my research team is uh, working under good conditions for excellent research uh, to be carried out at Nazarbayev University. Uh, prior to joining Nazarbayev University, I spent over five years uh, combined at Nazarbayev at uh, Humboldt Centrum Berlin uh, as Alexander von Humboldt postdoctoral fellow and also as project leader at University of California Santa Barbara uh, Center for Polymers and Organic Solids, which was established by uh, Nobel laureate Professor Alan Higer, the father of organic electronics and um, photovoltaics. Uh, obviously, we don't have time to go through all projects which I um, was working on during this time. But as an example, just during two years, 2018 and 2019, um, I managed to work on a series of um, projects in collaboration with different research groups around the world, from California to Japan, developing um, semiconductor devices capable of converting uh, electromagnetic waves from any part of spectrum into DC current. So, uh, for instance, um, graphene, cadmium, telluride, X, gamma ray detectors, different organic uh, solar cells and photodiodes working in UV visible near IR spectral range, um, pencil and brush, uh, pencil drawing and brush, uh, brush painted um, on office paper, thermoelectric generators converting heat into electricity, and uh, also uh, so-called ionic organic electronic ratchets, which share a field effect device um, structure with intentionally induced asymmetrical conductivity in um, the channel. Um, so these are low power um, energy harvesters, which are capable of converting electromagnetic noise available in environment as uh, in the form of microwaves and radio waves uh, into DC current and power some remote sensors or RFIDs. So now let us start with the first project I would like to share with you and uh, of course first goes uh, motivation behind it. Uh, <clears throat> rapid development of space technology requires thousands of satellites to operate at the close Earth's orbit or deeper in space, and they operate under harsh conditions, under high ionizing radiation um, in space, uh, mostly originated from solar wind, so some high energy flux of uh, protons and electrons. Definitely that has a detrimental effect on their electric, electronic, uh, optoelectronic and photovoltaic systems, and uh, for instance when protons hit the device structure, they create so-called point defects, uh, vacancies or interstitials um, in the mm, material of all functional layers. Um, 
So these defects result in localized energy levels and depending on the material, um, it's either they act as shallow traps for charge carriers or efficient recombination centers. In any way, that reduces performance on devices and uh, such conventional optoelectronic material silicon, unfortunately, is very sensitive to um, radiation-induced defects and degrades very rapidly. So the substitution of this material with novel radiation-resistant semiconductors and no new type of devices um, is um, definitely necessary. Um, the future, bright future of uh, space technology is not the only motivation. Unfortunately, there are other reasons why we need to develop radiation-resistant semiconductor devices. So initially, it was planned to use remote control robots to clean the um, roof of damaged nuclear reactor um, in Chernobyl from highly radioactive debris. Uh, and uh, these robots were collected from around the world. Unfortunately, all of them could operate under these conditions only up to 15 minutes and then were completely killed by high level of ionizing radiation because um, their silicon-based video sensors and electronics were just uh, damaged. So that's why 15, uh, 18, 20 years old Soviet soldiers um, had to clean the roof uh, with shovels and bare hands from highly radioactive debris and uh, uh, immobilized damaged uh, robots. Uh, so definitely pain with their health and eventually lives. One may believe that a lot has changed since then and nowadays robots are much more robust in terms of operation under ionizing radiation. However, the second largest nuclear catastrophe which happened in Fukushima, Japan, um, clearly revealed that um, nothing has changed and modern Japanese robots were killed by radiation with the same rate as their ancestors in um, Chernobyl. Definitely something has to be done in this field too. Um, we are talking not only about damaged reactors but also on about vast Mm, radioactively contaminated territories uh, with developed infrastructure and some of them are located quite close to big cities uh, and heavily populated areas. Uh, so while these uh, huge territories are completely eliminated from any economical life of their countries, only recently there were some uh, investments in development of solar power in uh, Chernobyl exclusion zone and I believe that will be a trend, um, a growing trend in the future. Uh, <clears throat> so, considering that compound semiconductor exhibit much higher radiation resistance than silicon, um, first solar products uh, will have additional advantage and selling point uh, in the scope of a uh, project like this. So that's why if any one of you guys are interested in checking radiation resistance of your devices, uh, I will be very happy to help with that. So my first contribution in the field of radiation resistant photovoltaics was done during my uh, stay at Helmholtz Centrum Berlin. There we have shown that hybrid ammonium lead iodide perovskite solar cells, regardless of their uh, nomen. Uh, photo instabilities reveal uh, much higher radiation resistance in comparison to um, their uh, silicon counterparts. Uh, so that finding was quite influential in terms of development of uh, research activity in field of uh, single junction perovskite and also CIGS perovskite tandem solar source for photovoltaics around the world. Now this uh, direction is actively uh, under development and research. Uh, once I established my own research group, um, I decided to broaden the spectrum of materials which are supposed to 
uh, be interesting for radiation resistant uh, opto electronic and photovoltaics so consider not only perovskites but also inorganic and organic semiconductors so it might be not uh, clear from the first look what is common between uh, extremely hard protective titanium nitride coatings and uh, compound cadmium zinc telluride semiconductor which is commonly used in um, gamma x-ray detectors however these uh, uh, semiconductors are quite decent optoelectronic materials and uh, uh, they share the same cubic time type of crystalline lattice uh, and moreover what is the most important uh, they are uh, radiation resistant materials which means that they uh, are tolerant more tolerant to ionizing radiation than many others so my idea was to combine polycrystalline magnet transported titanium nitride thin films with uh, single crystal cadmium zinc telluride substrates um, in order to fabricate a heterojunction uh, which uh, hopefully possible to optimize getting um, high performance photodiodes and then uh, these type of devices are expected to um, have a high radiation resistance because they are based on uh, two radiation resistant optoelectronic materials so that is the device structure we made in our lab and uh, um, the cross-section SAM image of this device structure uh, so in order to get the decent uh, optical transmittance for the uh, window layer um, we used a uh, sandwich ITO about 100 nanometers and titanium nitride 10-15 nanometers uh, so we reached at the level of 80% transmittance in the wide spectral uh, range uh, and uh, uh, after words it was necessary to check how this heterojunction performs uh, so we measured a dark gv curve and here we need to focus as photodiode um, on reverse dark current because that is the parameter which defines the background noise and sensitivity of uh, these devices and we have shown that the introduction of titanium nitride layer significantly reduces the dark reverse current in this uh, device structure and uh, that is really good for uh, high performance photodiodes so next step is uh, to check how this uh, heterojunction responds to light so we used uh, conventional m1.5 solar simulator with a set of nuclear density neutral density filters and uh, uh, measured gv characteristics at many different light intensities so the key here is to check how um, photocurrent density scales up with light intensity and we want to see linear dependence of photocurrent with um, uh, versus light intensity in the as broad light intensity range as possible so the parameter which defines this uh, is linear dynamic range and for low uh, reverse bias we reach quite high linear dynamic range uh, above 100 decibel which is uh, exceeding analogs based on uh, compound semiconductors <coughs> so next parameter which has to be uh, analyzed is uh, spectral responsivity and uh, um, it is measured with a similar setup as standard eqe uh, however in this case we need to be sure that it's possible to apply reverse bias because we operate in the photodiode mode and instead of considering the photon flux and flux of photogenerated charge carriers uh, as we do for eqes we deal directly with um, the power of monochromatic incident light and the generated photocurrent so the ratio gives us responsivity or in other words ampere watt characteristic and uh, measuring at different uh, biases gives us a family of curves which clearly show that the responsivity increases with uh, reverse bias due to increased um, efficiency of separation of charge carriers photogenerated charge carriers 
and uh, at large biases we reverse bias we get the maximum responsivity however large bias is not always good because we need also to remember about sensitivity of, of these devices and in order to quantify that we need to couple the uh, responsivity spectra with reverse uh, dark current and uh, get the higher estimation of specific detectivity um, so-called uh, short noise limited uh, detectivity um, uh, as uh, responsivity divided by square root of dark current at given bias and here we indeed see that large reverse bias is not performing uh, the best um, the optimized operating condition at uh, small reverse bias of 0.2 uh, uh, volts uh, <clears throat> which results in the highest detectivity and uh, the parameter the value which we get is 4.1 10 to 12 joules uh, which is quite high and uh, later we will compare it with other devices it's not um, enough to have high responsivity and high detectivity, you need to be sure that um, the photodiode also can respond um, to fast switching, uh, fast changing uh, light signals. So uh, we use such a setup where a uh, fast switching LED is powered by square wave function generator and uh, we connect our photodiode via are one uh, 50 ohm input uh, channel of oscilloscope and monitor how um, photo current is responding to fast changing uh, light signals so when we deal with uh, low modulation frequency of light intensity uh, we see quite nice saturation under illumination then saturation at the dark current uh, However, if frequency increases, uh, we definitely see some lagging behind photo current and mm, the optical signal. Uh, so in order to quantify the response speed of photodiodes, commonly used uh, parameters are rise and fall times. Uh, so rise and fall times defined as the time interval it takes for photo current to increase and uh, decrease respectively um, between the levels of photocurrent corresponding to 10 and 90 percent of the maximum photocurrent. So we got 3.5 microseconds for rise time and 3.8 microseconds for fall time. So now if we compare um, the determined photodiode characteristics with uh, reported equivalents uh, based on like photo detectors based on compound semiconductors recently reported in literature we see that our devices concurrently reach the highest detectivity and response time um, and uh, um, stay in between the best samples in compare uh, in terms of responsivity so when we consider on top of that also large linear dynamic range we clearly can make a statement that this heterojunction titanium nitride cadmium zinc telluride is a high performance photodiode and with clear mind we can proceed further to um, study its radiation resistance so for that we place our devices in the vacuum chamber of proton pulse accelerator so here we see the uh, accelerating voltage pulse and corresponding beam uh, like proton beam current density uh, by integrating this uh, proton beam current density pulse we get the accumulated fluence uh, which is 2 10 to 12 protons per square centimeter which corresponds to about uh, six years of operation at low earth orbit so we also carried out stopping and range ions in matter uh, so-called stream simulations in order to see how uh, protons of given energy uh, penetrate inside the device structure and how they dissipate energy there uh, so the key question here to be sure that 
the proton irradiation under given conditions damages the whole photosensitive area of the photodiode. And for that purpose, we carried out, uh, out also um, transfer matrix optical simulations, which shows us that the most of photogeneration happens within first micrometer uh, of the cadmium zinc telluride substrate uh, next to the heterojunction interface. So in this case, we see that we damage the whole uh, photoactive region and the analysis of radiation resistance is carried out properly. In order to compare the radiation resistance of our device, uh, we prepared um, uh, similar heterojunction photodiode based on silicon uh, with quite decent characteristics. And uh, um, here are the relative change of key photodiode characteristics before and after irradiation. So we consider here responsivity, detectivity, and noise equivalent power. Uh, NAP stands for the minimum uh, optical signal power, which can be distinguished by um, uh, photodiode due to the noise to signal uh, ratio uh, and uh, it's determined from taking uh, the ratio between experimentally measured noise current spectral density and responsivity so we see that um, our titanium nitride cadmium zinc telluride heterojunction uh, exceeds in radiation resistance silicon counterpart uh, by orders of magnitude. So that means uh, our photodiode can operate under harsh ionizing um, radiation conditions much longer. So summarizing, we propose this new uh, titanium nitride cadmium zinc telluride heterojunction photodiodes, which uh, simultaneously achieved um, outstanding detectivity, response time, and linear dynamic range. Uh, indicating that it's a really high performance device outperforming equivalents based uh, equivalent photo de detectors based on compound semiconductors. Um, we have proven experimentally that indeed, as expected, this heterojunction possesses high radiation resistance, and the synergy of this high performance and high radiation resistance uh, results in a uh, possibility for. Uh, applications in uh, space and other radioactively contaminated areas. Uh, more details can be found in our recent paper uh, published in Advanced Optical Materials and highlighted on their cover. So we would like to thank also the funding agencies for supporting our research. So next project. Um, is based on device physics of semi-transparent organic solar cells. Uh, we are accustomed that solar cells are supposed to absorb all light and convert it into electricity, and that's why usually uh, solar cells are opaque devices. However, for some purposes in integration uh, needs, um, we uh, require some semi-transparent solar cells. And that could be achieved with conventional inorganic semiconductors only by thinning the active layer. However, in that case, um, the solar cell becomes semi-transparent not only um, in the visible spectral range where human um, eyes can see, uh, but also in the UV and near IR spectral range, with what uh, significantly limits their uh, performance. So due to molecular nature of organic semiconductors where we deal with uh, homo and lumo levels highest occupied molecular orbitals and lowest unoccupied molecular orbitals we can tune the um, molecular structure and thus the energy structure in that way that uh, organic semiconductors are transparent in the visible spectral range but absorbed in the uv and near ir in that case we can develop selectively transparent uh, solar cells in the visible spectral range. Uh, uh, there are different possibilities for applications of such solar cells, uh, integration in uh, windows of new or existing buildings, also integration in greenhouses, uh, where uh, plants are using only narrow spectral ranges uh, from the visible range uh, for photosynthesis and all other wavelengths 
do not make any impact on well-being of um, these plants besides overheating. So they could be uh, converted into electricity and power the greenhouse uh, itself. Uh, actually, the visible spectral range is quite narrow in comparison to M1.5 spectrum, and that's why even for M1. Point, uh, AVT, average visible transmittance of 100, um, we get um, performance, like theoretical performance, um, calculated based on the quasi Shockley limit, about 20%. Uh, percent, uh, with uh, as you see here, when we go for larger average visible transmittance, the optimal band gap is shifting towards lower values, and for AVT 100, we get optimal band gap of 1.12 electron volts. So uh, that is really great. However, in reality, we deal with AVTs about 30 percent. Um, and uh, performance below 10%. Uh, so that is really a challenge to overcome. And in order to do that, we need to understand more about device physics of semi-transparent organic solar cells. So our model of semi-transparent OPV system uh, is based on uh, state-of-the-art narrow band gap cotac cf the narrowest band gap acceptor material available commercially, and PCE10, which is the well-studied uh, conventional uh, donor uh, polymer material. So you can see that these materials possess very uh, different bend uh, gaps, and as a result, they also absorb in different spectral range. Uh, so as cotic 4 f absorbs mostly in the near IR spectral range, which is good for semi-transparent applications. Uh, however, PC10 uh, still absorbs in uh, visible range, and we need to do something with that. So the idea was to uh, dilute systematically the donor concentration from optimized 40% to 20%. Um, and uh, um, also we were reducing the active layer thickness. Um, this uh, played some important role, which we will discuss a bit later. So we definitely achieved higher average visible transmittance by um, diluting donor concentration, uh, reaching up to 77% for the bulk heterojunction active layer, uh, which is the record parameter among reported uh, values. And uh, our goal is to uh, understand how the dilution of uh, donor concentration and its resultant like effect increase of average visible transmittance effects on device physics and uh, in particular photoelectric processes in these uh, solar cells. So we prepared a, a series of devices with inverted device structure and uh, highly uh, op uh, reproducible and optimized uh, opaque back electrode. So we didn't go for semi-transparent electrode uh, in order to have uh, solid uh, results uh, without thinking about possible uh, parasitic effects on, of unoptimized electrodes and uh, to be able to make a solid conclusion of device physics change uh, due to dilution of the donor. So uh, here we see that performance drops noticeably as we go from 40 to 20 percent donor concentration, um, while field factor remains pretty much the same. VOC uh, slightly decreases, uh, but short circuit current drops significantly, and uh, that correlates well with EQE spectra, which we also measured. So we need to understand what's actually going on and what's the reason for this. Um, and uh, for that, we need systematically address um, photo generation, recombination, and extraction. So first, uh, we carried out uh, transfer matrix optical simulation in order to which takes into account all optical constants and thicknesses of functional layers. 
Um, and uh, indeed, the generation rate uh, drops as we uh, dilute the donor concentration. However, this drop in uh, generation rate can explain only up to 30% of the short circuit current reduction. So there is definitely something else going on in the system which has to be understood. So first look on um, recombination happens when we measure VOC versus light intensity and check the slope uh, in terms of kt over q. So we see that for 40 and 30 percent the slopes are close to unity, um, 1 kt over q, and a slight increase uh, once we go to 20 percent. Uh, so to better understand uh, the slope 1 kt over q corresponds to uh, pure bimolecular recombination. Um, however, if there is some increase in relative contribution from bulk trap assisted recombination. Um, the slope becomes larger than 1 kT over Q. Uh, that's something what we can see here. Uh, at the same time, there is another opportunity when we have uh, surface recombination and between active layer and the electrode, uh, that results in a uh, slope smaller than 1 kT over Q. And uh, uh, that's why we need to consider the opportunity when um, there is a multi-mechanism recombination dynamics uh, when we have um, bimolecular and trap assisted in the bulk and the interface. In that case, for some cases, um, when we, we may get the situation when the bulk traps can counterforce interface traps uh, in terms of their effect on the slope. And uh, we result with the slope VOC versus light intensity close to 1 kT over Q. However, it's not evidence of pure bimolecular recombination, but just the uh, uh, complex recombination dynamics. And that, uh, unfortunately, quite often in organic photovoltaic community misinterpreted. So the only option in the scope of this measurement, VOC versus light intensity, to double check if slope 1 uh, kT over Q is really the uh, evidence of pure bimolecular recombination is to measure temperature dependent VOC versus light intensity. In that case, if um, uh, the slope does not change with temperature and remains 1 kT over Q, that's a good evidence of pure bimolecular recombination, but that's not often done. So in our previous uh, study, we measured a bunch of systems, including this uh, PC-10 COTIC 4F. Um, so we measured VOC versus light intensity at different temperatures, determined the slope at different temperatures. And indeed, we see that um, this is not constant uh, value. It changes with change of temperature, specifically in this temperature uh, slightly above uh, room temperature, where the majority of measurements are carried out in research groups. Uh, this slope comes to uh, close to unity, and that could be easily misinterpreted. However, indeed, we have a com complex um, recombination dynamics, and in order to deconvolute what's going on here, we need to first determine concentration of charge carriers as a function of bias. Um, so we employed um, voltage impedance spectroscopy to do that. And uh, uh, first of all, I would like to admit that um, even for optimized 40% uh, donor content, the concentration is quite low because on average we get about 10 to 17 uh, per cubic centimeter. Um, but as we uh, dilute the donor concentration, the concentration of charge carriers drops even further because of uh, lower generation rate. And then we need to apply this analytical multi-mechanism recombination model to analyze what's going on in terms of recombination dynamics. So um, the first equation describes bimolecular recombination in uh, low mobility medium, like, like semiconductors. That's well-known Langevin equation. Uh, the second equation describes trap-assisted recombination in the bulk of the active layer of organic solar cells, um, derived by Professor Paul Blom, uh, who is currently director of Max Planck Institute for Polymer uh, Research. And the third equation describes the 
uh, surface recombination at the interface between active layer and electrode uh, for organic solar cells derived by me. And with that, I completed this multi mechanism recombination model, uh, which was presented to organic photovoltaic community and applied to many systems uh, like donor acceptor bulk heterojunction uh, solar cells. So this is quite a nice tool because it allows us individually uh, quantify each contribution of recombination mechanism and see uh, what is dominating and what's not. Uh, so for example, we consider here this optimized PC1040% CO2-CFF system. Uh, we feed the experimental emergent recombination current with, in the scope of this multi-mechanism recombination model, uh, determine a known uh, recombination parameters. And, and then when we analyze individual contributions from recombination uh, mechanisms, uh, to total recombination current, we see that indeed uh, trap assisted recombination in the bulk and at the um, interface uh, have pretty much equal contribution and their contributions are dominant in comparison to bimolecular recombination at uh, open circuit uh, voltage. Um, and uh, um, that is because of quite relatively low concentration of charge carriers in the active layer and quite low um, Langevin uh, coefficient for bimolecular recombination. Um, so it should be mentioned here that when we go to lower concentrations, this relative contribution of bimolecular recombination should drop even further because bimolecular recombination is proportional to concentration of charge carriers in second power. So as it drops, its contribution, relative contribution, will even drop further. That's why we uh, analyze here only the dominant contribution from bulk and surface trap assisted recombination and see how um, uh, dilution of the donor concentration um, content um, affects them. So we see that nothing pretty much happens with the concentration of surface traps. However, the bulk traps steadily increase as we dilute donor and keep in mind that we use the same materials here uh, for all devices uh, the only difference is a lower uh, donor concentration that means that we do not provide any additional impurities in uh, devices with lower donor concentration and the origin for this increase in um, traps bulk traps concentrations comes from the um, not enough developed interpenetrated network of donor material uh, because of lower concentration and formation of isolated donor islands within the bulk heterojunction, which act as morphological traps. So this uh, conclusion is uh, supported by additional measurements of TEM, uh, photoconductive uh, AFM, and uh, uh, GVX. Uh, next question which is important to be analyzed is extraction of charge carriers. So um, when we generate electron hole pair and inside the bulk junction, before it's collected by respective electrodes, um, these charges have to travel a certain distance through the active layer. And the probability of their collection is determined by so-called um, like calculate can be calculated by Hecht equation, which relies on such parameters as mu tau product. So it combines the features of charge transport and charge recombination because we have both mobility and recombination lifetime. So when we analyzed the mobility lifetime product uh, as a function of donor concentration, uh, we see that with dilution of donor, this mu tau product drops. Expected because we mentioned both this morphological issue, interpenetrated donor uh, network, um, both mobility and recombination lifetime drops. So, in particular, because of increased uh, bulk concentration due to morphological traps. Uh, however, due to systematic decrease of the thickness of the active layer. We managed to achieve average extraction probability um, about 90%, which is quite good for all devices. So they definitely do not suffer from poor uh, charge extraction. So summarizing 
I would like to highlight that for system PC10 COTAC 4F, we managed to achieve record um, high um, average visible transmittance of up to 77% by systematic dilution of uh, donor, donor con uh, content from 40 to 20% um, due to low uh, charge carrier concentrations in these devices. The contribution of bimolecular, relative contribution of bimolecular recombination is quite low and the dominant uh, recombination mechanisms are trap assisted recombination via bulk traps and surface traps and um, we have shown that surface trap concentration doesn't change with dilution of donor but uh, bulk trap assist the uh, bulk uh, trap concentration increases significantly uh, due to formation of uh, morphological traps uh, in the bulk heterojunction layer uh, more details can be found uh, in our recently published paper in advanced materials uh, highlighted at their cover uh, and also uh, included by invitation in special collection Rising Stars. So with this I would like to thank my uh, all my group research group members uh, not only for hard work in the lab but also for keeping good and healthy uh, working environment within the group which is very important. Uh, I would like to thank uh, my uh, project administrators who saved me from drowning uh, in bureaucracy and uh, paperwork uh, related to projects and acquiring uh, tons of equipment and materials. Um, also, a special thanks to our collaborator, Dr. Marat Kaikanu, who is the uh, scientific manager of the on-campus Proton Accelerator. Uh, he's very tolerant to our numerous requests for fine-tuning the irradiation conditions uh, of our samples. Um, I would like to thank Professor Smoot and Professor Abdikamalo from Energetic Cosmos Laboratory uh, for their inspiring interest in uh, my research and important contribution to our collaborative project on developing optoelectronic um, devices for space applications. Uh, also, thanks to our provost Adesida, who supported my research at all possible levels. Uh, many thanks to our international collaborators around the world. And of course, thank you for your attention and uh, thank you for finding time in your busy schedules to attend my seminar and hopefully you learn something uh, new from what my research group at Nazarbayev University is doing, uh, trying to uh, develop new optoelectronic and photovoltaic devices with added functionalities. Thank you very much.